Okay. And I wanted to show you too, if you haven't taken your bowl form off of the mold yet, I wanted to share with you, maybe I did already, I don't remember. This is what will happen to your form if you do not take it off the mold soon enough, okay? So remember your clay shrinks and whatever that mold is that you put it on is probably not shrinking unless you've used clay too. But that clay is probably not drying because you've wrapped it in plastic. So if you leave your piece on there and it dries too long on there, it's just gonna crack right open like this and you'll have to start over, okay? So that, that is a lesson in please babysit your pieces while they're on the mold and make sure you pull them off before they do that. All right, so last class we pulled it off and I'm just doing a quick review of what we did. Um, this is before I had the foot on, I used a ruler to measure up and make a mark all the way around so I know that the rim was gonna be a certain height and then I cut it off. And then I took some time to kind of use the pinch technique to flare out my rim a little bit. You can see it kind of flares out um, and rounding it out too. Most rims are, are not cut off and jagged. They're round and they're kind of smoothed out. We can see evidence of that a mold foot inside, which is kind of a fun um, technique or a fun sort of detail. Um, and then I rolled out a coil and I cut it with a ruler into a very straight geometric strip. And then I attach that strip to the foot. And talking about the foot, you want your foot to always kind of sit about an inch in from where your bowl starts to curve. And you don't want it to be too far in here because then your bowl is gonna wobble. You want it to support the weight of your bowl. So it should really be technically about an inch in from the edges here um, and be really flush to the table. So after you attach it and it dries a bit, you want to put it on the tabletop and you want to try to rock it and make sure that it doesn't rock and that it's nice and stable. Um, so I've done a fair amount of cleanup of this already, but I can tell that the foot might need a little bit more carving. And I know that because when I look at it, I mean, certain imperfections you could kind of dig and say, oh, it's, it looks like it's handmade and that's cool. But some of it kind of bothers me, like this is skinnier here and it's fatter in other areas. So I can very easily work on that. And it's still gonna look handmade, of course, but maybe a little bit more refined. So you could take um, a rib tool, if you have a rib tool, or you could just take a wooden tool with a straight edge. Either one would work. I'm gonna start off with a rib tool. Now, if you don't have a Lazy Susan, that's fine. You just very slowly Pick a thickness that you like and then take that loop tool and it's perfect for carving right now. See, leather hard clay is really good for this staging cleanup where you're refining your form by carving into it. And this puts a nice little flat edge on the side too. You know your clay's in a good state for carving when it just ribbons off like that and it's not sticking anymore. I can even go through and maybe do a tiny little bit of cleanup right here. Make sure you guys can see that okay in your camera. All of these details make a huge difference in the finished look of your piece. And, you know, the perception of your technical skill. If you've gotten to the point where you're making something and you've never actually carved into it in the leather hard state, I want you to start practicing that now because it is, it is absolutely one of the most fun stages of working in clay because this is the point at which you can really make something look like anything you want it to look like by carving into it. A lot more control over the clay when it's in this state than you do when it's wet. 
Okay, now I'm going to just put a nice little curve. I'll take a sponge to that later and make it look like I didn't carve onto it. Okay, and I might even go on the inside here and do a little cleanup. If you don't have um, a loop tool or a knife tool, um, just find something in your house that has kind of a straight edge to it, maybe in the kitchen, and experiment with that. I have actually never gone out and dug up my own clay before. That is something that's on my bucket list as well. And there's certain parts, you know, certain places that you can go do that. I think there's even maybe a class at Sac State that the teacher takes you out into Sacramento and riverbeds and you like go dig up your own clay and make a clay body out of it. So if you ever run across that as an opportunity in a college course, I would jump on it if you're really into clay and you want to learn more. There's a lot of potters out there, ceramic artists, that um, they make it part of their business and their, and their pottery and their style to make their own clay bodies. I like that. I think I've shared this artist before with uh, Ceramics 2, Josh, Josh Copas. He's that South Carolina, I'm sorry, North Carolina um, potter that digs his own clay and makes his own clay bodies, local. Carolinas are really, really a popular place for ceramics. There's a lot of potteries there. Asheville, North Carolina is um, a spot where a lot of potters kind of gravitate towards. And that's actually, he lives right outside of that place. I've considered moving there myself, <laughs> but I think it's really a popular spot right now. So, and it's just a tiny little town. There's probably not a huge amount of work there. Unless you're a potter and you want to make pots and you want to sell pots. Okay, now I'm really getting into the detail of it here. I'm looking at any divots in the foot that I don't like. Kind of scraping those away. Now this is where I have to decide am I going to carve my signature or am I going to paint it later? I think I'll paint it later. That's my preference. Okay. So I think I'll hold off on the sponge because I'm going to adds some tiny little handles. So now you can see it still looks handmade, but it's a little bit more refined. Make sure it's, there's no wobble in it because you just carved on the top. All right, so you do not need to put a handle on your bowl. If you made a small bowl and you're going to use it for cereal or ice cream or whatever, um, it's not necessary. But ceramics too, you might want to consider if you made a larger bowl, which you did, um, you're going to be putting things in this bowl probably to serve to people. And uh, I'd say a huge percentage of that time, those things are going to be hot. So you also, so the purpose of the handle really is to have something to grab that is not hot. So you can carry the hot bowl of food to the table and move it around. So if you have a big, bigger bowl, it's a really good idea to put handles on it. So I'm going to teach you how to put a handle on here that's um, just pinched out or slab rolled and then just a tiny little like bump on either side so not a pulled handle we don't need big gaudy handles on this bowl we just need something to grab on the side that is not touching the wall because the wall is going to get hot I'm going to push this aside and get some wet clay out do I have any questions anyone have any concerns about their particular bowl have you guys taken your bowl off the mug, off the mold yet? 
Anyone there? Am I speaking into a void? I just took mine off. You just took yours off? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it okay if we don't add handles? Yeah, you don't have to add handles. I kind of want to make a fruit bowl. Okay. Yeah, it's, at this point, the handles are optional for your bowl, but I wanted to show you just in case you needed to or wanted to. So you want to look at the form of your bowl and the texture, and you want to choose a handle that's really going to go with the design of your bowl. So my bowl is pretty short and kind of squat. Um, thin walls, but it still has kind of like a, a squat feel to it. So I think I'm going to just pinch off two uh, pieces of clay and try to make them the same size. Just roll them into a ball. And I'm just going to sculpt a little handle. A lot of potters have a, a scale. We have one in the classroom too. Um, if you're making two things that you want to be identical, uh, the scale is a really good tool to make sure you have the same amount of clay. A little bit more in this one. Rolling things into balls or um, on the table or wedging them is also another form of compression, which prevents cracks. Okay, I think those, now this one's a little too big. Okay, so I think I just want it to be kind of an oval shape. So I think I might just roll it into an oval and maybe form it a little bit with my fingers. Okay, and then just for fun, maybe put a finger mark in it. So I'm going to just press my thumb into this. Reminds me of those thumbprint cookies for Christmas. Put the jam inside. Okay, so now I have these two very kind of simple but very interesting looking handles. And then I have to figure out, well, how am I going to attach it? I feel like this part's too a little bit too thick. So I'm going to do a little bit more pinching and maybe compressing of the bottom part because that's the part I'm going to attach. So I want there to be a good amount of surface area. Trying to make them similar, identical if possible. I think I'll mess with that after I put it on there. So there are some decisions you can make. If you like these kind of natural sort of clay cracking areas, you can keep them. If you don't, you can compress and smooth. And also run a sponge over this later, but compression is the, the first step in cleaning that up. First step is compression. Second step is light sponging. Third step would be when it's leather hard, you can carve into it. These are all different ways of refining your piece. And I'm, I am um, expecting you guys to be doing these things to your pieces now. Okay, I, I will no longer um, feel as though something is finished if it's just wet, pinched clay. Or kind of going into the realm of refinement. And when you guys get back to school this year, you know, we can spend more time on that. I can see your pieces in person and really um, help you. Okay, so now we need to decide where these are going, how they're going to sit on the rim. Reminding ourselves that these are functional, so I have to be able to grab them. 
so I want it to feel good, right? I feel that's pretty good because I can hook my finger under that ridge. In fact, I might even want to put my finger in that ridge. And if I do that, then I know for sure that it's going to fit. Okay. And then this is where a ruler might come in handy, just to make sure you're getting them nice across, crisscross from each other. This is about eight inches. Um, so I'm going to put a mark, just a tiny little mark on either side here. But then I'm also going to measure this side and this side. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to put this this way. And then I'm going to put this this way. That's four inches. So I think that this needs to go a little bit that way. That's look pretty good. Okay. I'm going to take a scoring tool and follow that mark down in as much as the area that it's touching as I can score. I want to score because at this point it's leather hard so attaching becomes a little bit more important. Gonna hold your shape up to it to see. Okay, I need to score even more. Miss Greninger, mm -hmm. you have to have a foot on your bowl. Yes. The same technique I just taught you. Okay, we're learning. We're learning specific techniques. The foot will take you some time. It'll probably take you, or maybe a, even a, a half or a full class period to make. Okay, so I've scored the handle and I've scored the full. And now I'm going to kind of bend down and really line it up. This is just, you know, a reminder too that good ceramics take time. There's no shortcuts. Time and effort. Okay, I'm going to compress these little cracks. I'm not attaching it super strong yet because I need to make sure they're in the right place. You could sculpt this into anything too. You could make it fun and fun and functional, right? Functional at this stage for these little projects is more important than fun. <laughs> so like you could say, oh, I'm gonna make this into a little animal head or something. Well, that's cool, but are you gonna wanna grab that animal head? Is it gonna be a functional handle? And is there some other place you could put an animal head on your bowl that would be more of a decorative element that doesn't get in the way of the function, if that's important to you? So here's where I can really do some more measurements that might help, like how far off the rim does this one go? Three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the placement, so I'm going to do some compression. And you have to babysit these handles just like you would a pulled handle on a mug. So they're, they could potentially crack away easily, lift off easily if they dry too fast. Um, you can spend a little time like attaching it if you want, but um, 
I'm probably not going to do that this time because I like that seam and I think they're attached well. So now this is where I could add some details. That feels pretty good. I like those handles. They're not too obvious, but maybe I could put some more fun little textural details in them. I could put in more fingerprints, like maybe one on this side. see a little bit of my scoring right here so I'm just going to take a tool and smooth that out. You might want to take some of the original texture, add it to the handle. I could have pressed the texture into this before I put it down too. That would have been smart. I'll show you what that looks like. That looks pretty neat. Again, these are the details that are going to make your piece good and look finished. Skilled. That looks cool too. They're both a little different. That one's got more like berry shapes and this one has more reed shapes. I like the little thumbprints inside too because you could pick them up like this or you could pick them up like this. It's just a place to put your hands that won't be as hot. Okay, a couple more, I don't know, pressure points here. Maybe thin out that wall a bit. It looks a little chunky. I like things that look kind of like in the moment, but like well done, you know, like considered. All right, so finishing touches. I'm going to take my little small sponge and I dip it in the water. Make sure there's no chunky clay things on the sponge. And wring it out. We're not adding a lot of water to this right now. We do not. That's the opposite of what we want to do. We just want enough water so we can do some finishing swipes here. Remember, you don't want anything geometrically sharp on your vessels because after you fire your piece, those things could be sharp and could actually even cut somebody that's using your bowl. You don't want to do that. You don't want to injure people with your ceramics. Make sure you don't have any deep, deep grooves on the inside. Remember, you have to babysit the drawing of this which means drape it lightly and check on it often. Make sure you don't have any, if you have like any like little bits of carved clay that are kind of sitting on your piece, they're stuck now because of the water, but they might actually like adhere themselves to your piece and fire that way. And then all of a sudden you have this little like you know, chunky booger thing on your piece that's actually fired in there. <laughs> I don't want that there. And then you have to sit there with the, the file and like file it off. So, okay, so now this is a challenge here because we've got handles on it so I can't flip it over. So I'm very carefully holding this on the side and then really cleaning up this foot. Getting rid of any carved ridges I don't want. Okay, 
Maybe one more sweep of this texture, just make sure it's everything I want it to be. Call this the final pass, right? The final overlook of your piece before you let it dry. Point of no return. Now you wouldn't be holding your piece like this if your piece was still wet and floppy because you're going to be warping it. My piece is post leather hard. It's definitely holding its own. It's really not a good idea actually be holding your piece like this at all because you could stretch out the clay. All right, last step, clean surface. You don't want to put this nice wipe down foot onto a surface with a bunch of crumbs of clay. New piece of printer paper or newspaper, put it down. And then we're going to lightly drape it with just one bag. I will take a photo of this from different angles and post it for you and post this video. Your pieces are due by the end of class on Monday. Requirements for this piece that you've rolled out a slab and you texturized it on the inside and the outside. You've slumped it over a form. You've pulled that form off. Your rim looks different than your wall which means it either flares out or it's round or maybe even an extra coil is thicker. You've, you've rolled out a foot, coiled out a foot and attached it to the bottom. You've cleaned it up and the handles are optional. All right, any